Oh man, does it feel good to be back out here. Got an action-packed video today. So sit back, get your popcorn, and chill out. There's gonna be a lot going on. You see those crab cages right there? I'll tell you all about those, and we're gonna go fishing after that. So this is the new boat. I know it's been a long time coming, and it's so frustrating and annoying to me because I've been waiting to reveal this boat for like two months now, and I'm waiting on these bow rails. I'm still waiting on bow rails. I'm still waiting on these so these should be here next week but i just made my own out of pvc just to get a video out but uh yeah this is the boat it's a whaley i'm going to go into a detailed description in another video in about a week or so i think there's going to be a lot of people interested i know people are probably like damn you should have got a 17 foot boston whaler montauk or some other thing some people disappointed but other people who have never seen this kind of boat i think this is one of the only ones in the united states i had it shipped from holland so all the details in the video coming up soon. I've got four crab pots to drop. You saw me bait those up with squid, mackerel, salmon. Let me show you a little trick that I've got right now. So this is a Promar cage. And on the doors, if the current is really strong, the doors will just stay open with the current. So I put this lead coil weight, hollow weight right here, and that'll hold it down. Crabs can still get in easily, but if there's a current, it won't go past there. So if you're new to crabbing or you're new to tying up rope, this is how I used to do it and I bet this is how a lot of people still do it. You grab the rope here and you coil it around your elbow all the way until it's all wound up. Probably one out of five times I would get tangled when I throw out the crab pot like this. Like somehow this just knots up really easily. But a trick I've learned from a friend, Alex, thanks man, he's a experienced sailor and this is how they tie up their lines. They stretch it out at arm's length, put it back in the hand, over, back in the hand, stretched out, back in the hand. And this, about 20 times I've thrown crab nets now, like this, never one tangle. And it's really easy to keep things organized. Really simple to tie it like this. So you got your buoy here, just grab that coil line, double it over, take your buoy, give it five, six wraps. Now you're ready to go. Now just drop it down and feed out the line. No more tangles. Now before I get out there and start crabbing, these hats are back in stock. I know a lot of people have been asking for them. Use the code BUTTERLIFE at my website, fishermanslife.net. You get 20% off anything. But the tur turquoise and charcoal hats are back in stock. And now something I'm really excited about, I consider this probably my first real sponsorship, is Pelican Coolers. Now you guys know the competition brands, but this cooler right here, this thing is a freaking tank. This thing will hold ice for eight plus days. They sent me this cooler and a 70 quart cooler. And I wanna show this to you guys real quick before we start fishing. So this is gonna be my go-to cooler from now on. It's got measurements on the top. And the thing that I like about it compared to some of the competitors are this is this latch system. Like this, this is some sturdy, sturdy latches. It's completely bear proof guaranteed bear proof there's a lifetime warranty on it holds ice for eight days I, I'm really impressed by it take it when I take it home the ice stays in there cold it lasts me three four fishing trips and the other cool thing about it it's got a drain plug on there because when I catch these rockfish and lingcod and stuff sometimes I don't want to bleed them in the water so I'll fill the cooler up with uh, with water and ice let them bleed in there and then it's got a drain plug on the bottom big spout spews out all the water get out all that blood and then you're left with fresh ice so we'll talk a little bit more about this cooler later in this video but let's get out there and start crabbing right now man there's been a problem with poachers already i swear every time done this crab season opens you hear about stories about poaching i've had my crab pots out overnight come back and there's one crab in it or there's three rock, rock crab no dungeness pretty shady man i'm pretty damn sure that there's poachers checking the pots at night i'm pretty sure it's a poacher too because i left the pot overnight checked it there was one crab in it i was like damn i didn't even rebate it at all dropped it back down checked the other pots came back to the one that was that had one 
and had another one in it already. So if, there, if there's one crab in this cage in 10 minutes, there should be more than one crab in it in 12 hours. So we're in 60 feet of water, baby. Let's get out of here. All right, we're ready to drop. You know, I think I'm the only one that uses old laundry detergent bottles as buoys. They work just fine. I don't know why you, other people don't do it. There's no regulation. You only have to have your um, uh, fisherman's uh, fishing I, fishing license attached to it. So I seal up the top so there's no, no leaks in the water. So let's drop this thing down. I got a three pound weight on it also, but look, check this out. All you do, just feed it out. Feed it, feed it, feed it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, well in. Oh, yeah, see, it's fine. It's fine. Now you can just let it go, and it'll go. It'll all just scope out just fine. All right, that's, that's it. One pot in. Let's go drop the next. So this is a conical pot. People use this a lot for lobster. I got a little weight on the bottom as well. But crabs climb up into it, and then once they're in, for the most part, they can't climb out. See how it's shaped like this, like kind of like a cone? So they'll climb in, they'll get stuck in here. They won't be able to get out. So let's drop it down. All right, y'all, let's get to the fishing grounds and I'll show you the rig I'm using. We're gonna catch some, some good quality fish today. A good variety of them too. Let's go. So I trimmed this motor way up. Let's see what the top speed can be. Alright baby, we are here. There's probably no current. We're in 40 feet of water right now. So I've got this one and a half, actually this is two ounce, two ounce jig head. Black and blue, big one on the bottom, that's a big hammer. And my little trailer teaser Kitek. Man, I'm telling you, if you're not using teasers, I don't know what you're doing. So we're just gonna cast out. I get probably 75% of the fish on that teaser up there. This is how it starts. A little one like that leads to a little bigger one. And then we start hammering them like friggin' nobody's business. It's not bad. All right, this is one pet peeve that I have. How come all the spinning rods you see are left-hand retrieve, but when you go on a boat, they're all right-hand retrieve? What is the point of that? Am I missing something here? I feel like if you use a left-handed retrieve, onshore why not use it offshore what what is the point there's more right-handed people you hold the rod with your strong arm you're supposed to anyway in my eyes and reel in with your weak so i don't understand why would you fight it with your weak hand it makes no sense to me no idea oh this fish it's a good size we're getting bigger out here it's actually not bad i think i'm gonna keep that one i like these 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 little rockfish 14 15 maybe even 16 inches so just bonked him, heart still beating. Cause gills one time, just like that. Don't want to get blood everywhere, so throw it in the cooler, let it bleed out, and try to catch another one. Feel like bites turning on now. We in the spot. Yep. Oh, there's a nice one. Oh, missed him. Damn. But he'll be back. Oh, a little kelp greenling. All right, well, that's my prediction. Couple rockfish, kelp greenling. 
There's the kelp greenling. See, lingcod love these fish. They got no spines on their back. Even though it's all ripped up, no spines there. So lingcod can just bite it down. Don't have to worry about getting poked. So let's measure him anyway. Probably not gonna keep him. That's a good 14 inch kelp greenling. Good little, good amount of meat on him. Ah, uh, oh, to keep or not to keep? All right, all right, I'll keep him. I'll keep him, I'll keep him. Sorry, man, you were so close to let, leaving, but now you're gonna feed me. There's a fish, and a good one too. Yeah, baby, there we go, that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, taking a run. He's big enough just to bring in like this. I mean, he's small enough to bring in like this. Weird, look at that. Some weird growth that's on him. See that? I've never seen a lingcod like that. That's really weird. 25 inches, but I don't need all that meat. So I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the two I got already. If I catch a vermilion, I might keep that, but let this guy go. See you later. Woohoo! All right. So if you're prone at all to getting seasick, this is something that I, I use. It's a, just a pool noodle. I pre-tie all my rigs, so if I do get snagged, which I just did, I don't have to retie out here. It cuts down on on time you got to retie, and it cuts down on time you're looking down tying rigs. So pre-made, um, this is how I have it. On my main line, I always just have a snap swivel, just like that. This is 65 pound braid, so it's not going anywhere. This is 30 pound fluorocarbon, and I've got this. Um, this loop here at the end, I don't use a, a swivel or anything, it saves tackle and time. Just attach it to the swivel and good to go. I got this dropper loop with a size two aught hook and just a regular old snap swivel. And that's what I attach the jig head and the swim bait to. Oh, I just hooked up on a big fish trolling. Oh yeah, hell yeah. That's a good one, whatever it is, that's a really good one. Oh, big ling. That's a chunky ling. Oh, he swallowed that swim bait. How the hell did you swallow that thing like that? Jeez, swallowed it completely. Seven inch swim bait, swallowed it all. Oh yeah, he's bleeding out. Damn, I got to keep this one. Shoot, I wasn't I wasn't planning on keeping any lingcod. That's a nice one though. Oh man. But ah, I wasn't planning on keeping him. Dang, he's got a full belly. This guy was eating good. Look at that. Oh man. Yeah, no way he was going to live. See how he's hooked in there like that? That's a big fish. That's an eight, nine pounder right there. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. That's what I'm talking about. All right. I think that's our, our cue to go get some crab. Can bleed him up. Just a casualty to the fishing. All right, bleed him out there. Blood all over the deck. It's a good little haul so far. All right, let's go get check crabs, and we'll come right back here. All right, y'all. This is our first pot. We're pulling up on it right now. Hello, Kirkland Signature. Oh, get over here, baby. Oh no. Oh my. I just pulled the kill cord. Oh, well, perfect. It works. All right, let's see what we got. It's funny how crabbing can be so much like fishing when you're not even, you don't even have a rod. What do we got here? What do we got here? Do I see color? Oh, the suspense is killing me. A rock crab. Huh. A big old rock crab. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of weird. Just a rock crab. All right, well, there's a crab. That's not a bad size. I mean, definitely can eat them. Yeah, no dungies here, so I'm just gonna leave this pot with me for now. Check the other ones. If there's dungies over there, then I'm gonna drop this one over there again. All right, here we go. Nothing. That is so strange. That is so strange. That's so weird. All right, next one. 
Oh, this is a conical one and it kind of feels heavy. Well, there's two keepers. That's two keeper dungies. Oh yeah, about six inches for that one. This one's nice too. Both males, full of meat, hard claws. This one's about five, five, this one's about six, a little over six inches too. All right, it's not bad. I'm just gonna drop this one back here then. All right, and you know what? I'm just gonna go down maybe, I don't know, 20 yards from here or so, and drop this other one. I mean, they're here, big ones. I'll just drop this one right here too. I think that's a good idea. All right, two dungies in three pots so far. That's, uh, I don't know, that's not that great. Let's get over here. This is how it should look. That's how it should look. A couple keepers, or at least one keeper. 100% keeper, that's nice. All right, another little rock crab. All right, not too bad. This ain't too bad of a spot, I guess. Two pots right there. Another one right here, just drop this one back. Make sure the cage doors are closed. Good, good to go. Not bad, huh? Those are nice, those are really nice. Actually, now that I got these, I don't need this rock crab. Oh, this dungeon got my foot. Oh, he got my toe. Oh, he got my rubber boot. Let go of my freaking foot. All right, let's go eat, baby. Well, I'm about to cook this crab up and I'm so hungry. This is gonna be so delicious. But first, I wanna clean out the bloody water from these fish. I don't want them just to be sitting all, the, all day long in this bloody water. So, nice black rockfish right there. That big old lingcod right there. One thing I really like about this cooler, filled with water, so it's really heavy. Got this drain spout right there. Get all that bloody water out. Big spout, so all that water comes out. That's a really great thing about having a cooler, especially if you bleed your fish in it. All right, so this is what I got today. Check that out. If you never tried that, go find it somewhere. Find it on Amazon. Seasoned fried bean curd. That sounds disgusting. But it is not it's delicious so let's check out what i do with this i got some rice so i'm going to rinse the rice one time just enough water so it covers the rice to about halfway mark on the first finger i think that's how you do it man whatever we're going to cover the top let it simmer for 15 to 20 minutes now for our crab we got to keep the carapace if we're going to eat it and somebody comes and checks on what we're eating, we gotta make sure that they don't think we're eating an undersized crab. So we're gonna rip off its head just from the side like this. I'm gonna do it over the water so I don't get it all over the boat. These are the crab's lungs. You can take those off. Now this meal is so simple and it's so satisfying. Anybody can do it. It's so easy. Cook rice, get an avocado, get some kind of meat, and that's all you need. Turn this heat down a little bit for the rice so it doesn't boil over so the quality of this cooler is amazing it's a little bit pricey it's about 300 dollars, but that's the same price that you would pay if you get like a yeti or an otterbox any competing cooler in this category is going to be priced like that in my opinion this pelican far su surpasses the quality of the pel of the other competitors like if you go out to the woods camping with your family or something you wouldn't have to put this in your car at night to protect you from bears you can just keep it outside put a lock on it you probably i don't know don't even need to put a lock on it because the latches are so good too also if you're away from any civilization you don't have to worry about going in town and getting ice because the ice retention on this thing is freaking fantastic now i know it's a little bit pricey but if you really want one and you're short on cash if you just save like 20 bucks or 30 bucks a week or two weeks you'd have one in a few months so you get what you pay for in my opinion this is a great product so there's a link in the description for a free gift for one of these coolers you have to add it to the cart during checkout but yeah i'm happy to be sponsored by pelican it's a lifetime warranty on this thing made in the united states check link in the description if you get one you get a free gift and yeah 
let's get some food cooking. I'm starving right now. And you use this to season the rice and you use this to season the crab. It peels back, there's a bunch of them in, in there. You peel them back like that. They've got a little slit on the bottom and you stuff your rice, avocado, and crab in there. It's like a little, little taco kind of thing. Now you just do this to flavor. So I got this bunch of bean curd in my hand. I'm gonna squeeze out the juice all up in there. Just to make it easier, I'll just pour some of the juice from here. All right, that's perfect, I think. Mmm, yum. This is called Inari at a sushi restaurant. Inari, Inari, and I don't know. I don't think you pronounce the R. I always butcher other languages. But you open it up like a little pillowcase. Put your rice in there. You can just have this with rice, honestly. You can just have this with rice. So while that crab cooks, I'm gonna stuff this one with rice. So look, got the little bean curd, got the rice in there, some avocado on top, nice fat. And then after that, fill the top with crab meat. <laughs> I think the crab is just about done. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of these little rolls, wraps going on right now. I could just eat this right now and I would be completely satisfied. Add crab, it brings it to a whole nother level. Let's try this by itself. Oh man, nothing like Dungeness Crab, especially the first one of the season. So sweet. Huh. All right, let's get all this meat out of here. All right, baby, now we put it in just like this. Put it straight inside, stuff it down. You can stuff it with as much as you want. Oh man, mouth's, mouth's been watering. All right, moment of truth, let's try this out. I already know. I mean, you can't go wrong with this. Rice is hot, crab is hot. Easy to eat, easy to prepare. You don't need any spices. The smooth creaminess of the avocado, the salty sweetness of the crab, the rice, carbs. So easy to make too. Really good for kids. Kids eat this up like nothing. So sweet, so good. You can add fish to the top. You don't even need avocado. You just have it with rice. You can mix this up with, with anything. This is a, a great, simple meal. So I'm gonna finish this up. Damn, that's good. And then I'm gonna go back out. There's no, there's no food in that, come on. And then I'm gonna go back out and check the crab pots. Drop them one more time and then go fish and then check them one last time. That's weird again. Some small ass crabs. That's it. Weird. Very weird. I don't like pulling up empty pots. Um, I think I'm good with a couple crabs. Bring that home for the family. So I'm just gonna toss all the bait. All right, let's check the next one. Nothing. That is so strange. That is so strange. One rock crab. Is that not kind of kind of strange? I'm not saying anything. I'm not trying to be paranoid, but is that not kind of strange? Is that not weird? that this door is open. Is that not a little weird? I don't know. What do you think? 